Skeptical New Testament scholars like Bart Ehrman argue that the four Gospels in our New Testament are anonymous. In his best-selling book, Jesus Interrupted, Ehrman writes, Some books, such as the Gospels, had been written anonymously, only later to be ascribed to certain authors who probably didn't write them, apostles and friends of the apostles. But wouldn't the early church be in a better position to know who wrote the Gospels than contemporary critics? I'd certainly think so, and as it turns out, the early church fathers were unambiguous and united about who wrote the four Gospels. It wasn't until 400 AD did anyone even dare to challenge the authorship of the Gospels, a guy by the name of Faustus the Manichaean. Before that, even rabid pagan critics like Celsus just took their authorship for granted. Augustine clapped back at Faustus for even trying to challenge the traditional attribution, and I think his point still resonates today. Going full thug life, Augustine wrote, Why does no one doubt the genuineness of the books attributed to Hippocrates? Because there is a succession of testimonies to the books from the time of Hippocrates to the present day, which makes it unreasonable either now or hereafter to have any doubt on the subject. How do we know the authorship of the works of Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, and Varro, and other similar writers, but by the unbroken chain of evidence? In other words, Augustine just wasn't putting up with any double standards. So with that in mind, let's take a look at six ancient sources and see what the earliest succession of testimonies has to say about just who the gospel writers were. First, let's start with a guy by the name of Tertullian. Tertullian was a Latin apologist who wrote a boatload of responses against the heresies of his day. He wrote from Carthage, which is in modern day Tunisia, at around 200 to 225 AD. I'm going to summarize what he and the other fathers had to say about the four gospels, but if you look in the description down below, I will give you references to where you can find the direct quotes yourself. Now, Tertullian tells us that the Gospels were written by two apostles and two apostolic men. The apostles, of course, were Matthew and John. He says Luke and Mark were apostolic men because of their associations, and he points out that Luke traveled with Paul. Tertullian tells us that Mark gives us a record of Peter's preaching. Now let's turn to Clement of Alexandria. Clement was a philosopher who traveled abroad. His travels took him to Greece, Italy, Syria, and Palestine, searching for wisdom, before he finally settled in Alexandria, Egypt. Now, Alexandria Alexandria was a melting pot of sorts of all kinds of religious and philosophical ideas. There he heard the gospel from Patinus, the teacher at the Alexandrian Catechetical School. Clement would become a believer, and in time, he became the head of the school in Alexandria. He wrote at around 180 to 200 AD. Here's what we learn from Clement. He tells us that, at the urging of others, Mark wrote his gospel and based it upon Peter's preaching. Matthew and John wrote their gospels based on their own recollections, and Matthew's gospel was originally written in Hebrew. John was requested to write about things that were left out of the other three Gospels. Moving on to Irenaeus of Lyon. This church father is a big deal because he was a disciple of Polycarp, a disciple of the Apostle John himself. So now here we are, just one human link away from the Apostles. Lyon is in modern day France, and Irenaeus wrote it around 180 AD. Irenaeus agrees that Matthew's Gospel came first and was written in the Hebrew language. He wrote it while Peter and Paul were still alive preaching in Rome. Mark was Peter's disciple and recorded Peter's preaching. Luke was Paul's traveling companion and also wrote a Gospel himself, and Irenaeus tells us that John wrote a gospel while he was living in Ephesus. Next up, instead of looking at a person, we're going to look at the Muratorian Canon. Now, the Muratorian Canon or Muratorian Fragment is the oldest list of the New Testament books that we've discovered. The original document is dated to the late 2nd century, which is why it's a big deal. The fragment lists 22 of the 27 books that were later included in the New Testament. It was discovered by and named after the Italian historian Ludovico Muratori in the Ambrosian Library in Northern Italy and was published around 1740. The early part of the text is lost, but most scholars agree that it refers to Matthew and Mark. The fragment tells us that Luke wasn't personally an eyewitness, but wrote his gospel based on other reports. John wrote his gospel at last at the urging of some friends. Moving on to Justin Martyr. Justin was a Christian teacher and writer, and as his name indicates, he died for his faith. He was a native of Samaria who moved to Ephesus to study philosophy. Justin was very impressed with the character of Christians who are willing to be martyred for their convictions, and he converted when he met an older man who challenged his philosophies and shared the gospel with him. After becoming a believer, Justin was very famous for writing apologies, which were addressed to the Roman Emperor Pius in the face of great persecution. His writings give us amazing insights into the beliefs and practices of second century Christians. While Justin never mentions the apostles by name, he does say that the Christians possessed memoirs of the apostles. These writings were read in churches and also called gospels. Justin tells us about Jesus' life from the gospel and we know that Justin was referring to our four Gospels because he had a student by the name of Tatian. Now, Tatian wrote a book called the Diatessaron, which literally means through four. Scholars believe that this was an early harmony of the four Gospels and contains nearly the whole 
text of the books that we're familiar with, and the Diatessaron begins with John's prologue. Moving on to Papias. Little is known about Papias other than he was the Bishop of Heropolis in Asia Minor. He recorded details regarding Jesus and the Apostles in five volumes titled An Exposition of the Sayings of the Lord. Sadly, his works are now lost, like most ancient writings, but we do have some excerpts of his writings found in other books. While there's some debate over which John exactly Papias knew, many believe that Papias was a hearer of the Apostle John. Irenaeus at least seems to take that for granted, and Papias rubbed elbows with Polycarp. From Papias, we learn that Mark was Peter's interpreter and wrote down what Peter preached, but not in order. Papias tells us that Matthew's gospel was originally written in Hebrew, and others translated as they were able to. So let's take a look back now and just consider all that we've seen. We've looked at six ancient sources. In those ancient sources, we have zero traces of any disagreement. There's a lot of agreement, not only who wrote the gospels, but how they were written, when, and why. Notice that this evidence comes from all over the Roman Empire. You have modern-day Turkey, Tunisia, Italy, France, and Egypt. Remember, this was before email, text, Facebook, or Google. It's not as if they could all convene at Crete at the same time and concoct a story together. So what we have here agrees with the manuscript evidence that we have, which we looked at in a previous video. To say we have no idea who the four evangelists were just really fails to do justice to the early external evidence from the early church fathers. The chain of evidence is unbroken, and Augustine is right. To toss this evidence out is to apply a double standard.